Who doesn't like a nice hot cup of tea? Hello and welcome to today's episode of Iron Drum and today I have a special guest which is not a person uh, because I'm home alone with my two dogs but it is a drum here which I've been using on and off over the last say six months uh, it is the Kentville Drums Kangaroo Hide drum head. Now this is a 14 inch heavyweight which I'm using on my DW TrueSonic 40x5 chrome over brass snare drum and before Everyone jumps up and down, goes in the, co in the comment section and starts ripping me apart. Um, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Or, or the kangaroo, I should say. Uh, now, I'll give you a bit of a backstory is that uh, these are handmade. Uh, they are made to size, all the way up to 24 inch. And you can get larger sizes through um, steel at Kentville Drums, just didn't drop them a line, but anyway. I could also get premier uh, international sizing as well, but we'll get back to that. Kangaroos in Australia, there's basically two kangaroos per resident or per person in Australia. So it's about 45 million estimated kangaroos. So, uh, you know, it's an alternative meat source compared to lamb or beef. Um, uh, much more of the animal is used in the process of the culling program now. We actually have quite a large culling program uh, going through Australia. We even have an island called Kangaroo Island. So, and I have been down to Kangaroo Island, it's not a very big town, it's quite small, uh, where they actually have the culling program because they are actually a bit of a nuisance. Um, like rabbits are in Australia as well, we have a rabbit proof fence, but we also have a kangaroo population problem. So, um, ethically, there is a culling program. You can see more of that, you can read more about the New South Wales government, Victoria government, and also the Queensland government as well. But yes, kangaroos are fairly rampant in Australia and, and, and don't think they're like, you know, in my backyard where I've got like five hanging out, you know, chilling in the back corner. Um, these are all more of the, if, even in the outer suburbs, like if you're driving down to like Phillip Island, uh, you can find kangaroos jumping through fields. What's up, Skip? Hey, back off! Uh, back off! Go away! Ah, fucking kangaroos. Uh, sometimes we do see them in the streets, but very rarely. So I don't think it's like, you know, as you go, Skippy, um, you know, as you're walking down to the, the local milk bar or to the old coffee house. So, um, but yes, we have a bit of a problem with, with kangaroos in Australia. So, uh, the hides are sourced, they are checked, uh, and then they are made to size or cut to size, I should say. Um, now, getting back to the head itself, uh, it is a brilliant head. It's a great head. Um, they're all unique, so not every head is the same. They're gonna have, you know, obviously, because they're using a hide, they're gonna be slightly different, and some are gonna be largely different. It just depends. We've got thin, medium, heavyweight. The one I use today is heavyweight. Really good for jazz, um, really good for brush work, and even good for rock. Get that real thuddy tone out of your drums. Um, I've just played a basic groove today, you know, and done some light stick work, some doubles and whatnot, and you can actually really hear the definition of the drum head itself off the drum. Um, so there are, it's a bit of a double-edged sword having a hide head, and the reason why I've used it for so long before I've made the video is just because I've never really had one. Um, and what I've found is, as you know, with, with normal traditional drum heads, um, the, the temperature and humidity don't affect them as much. It still does, uh, does affect them, but not on a larger scale. So what I found was like taking this head into a studio, I'd get it out from the car where it could be cold into a warm room. You got to hit it and it's just, it's just flat, sloppy and out of tune. You got to tune it up. Um, but like, it happens with any drum, but I just found, you know, as you know, with, with hide heads, they are really sensitive to temperature and humidity. So. Uh, less, pl less playing, <laughs> less talking, more playing. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my cup of tea, which is over there. I will see you soon. Um, it's fun this time.
Hello and thank you for watching this episode of Iron Drummer and how good does this drum head sound? Uh, it's that got that real traditional hide head tone to it. Um, if you are looking for more of a, 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 what I like to call it, a structured sound, where you know you pull it out of the box, you whack it on the drum, you tune it up, um, and you know it's going to be more forgiving in terms of humidity and being affected by humidity, temperature, and whatnot, then the Evans Calf Tone uh, head is for you. Um, but if you want that real authentic sound uh, and you have no eth ethical issues with using hard heads, then the Kentville Kangaroo High Drum is an absolutely fantastic choice. So in saying that, I'm going to go um, because I've done this outro about 15 times uh, and I want to get back to my cup of tea. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, if you have, if you haven't, please do, uh, and hit the little bell which, you know, will send you an update or uh, a little notification when a new episodes pop up. So. Thanks for watching. I'll see you very, very soon. Uh, we have some great stuff coming along the way, hopefully arriving this week. So until then.